Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is another episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody. And in this lesson, we are going to be talking about how to improvise chord melodies in a jazz context. So we're improvising jazz chord melodies, which means that we are playing melodies, but we're supporting every instance of the melody with a chord shape. I gotta pop in here real quick. This outline on the screen here is four separate videos. It was originally one video. I broke it up into four and we're on the fourth one out of these. This is actually playing chord melodies over real chord progressions, specifically two, five, one chord progressions, and some examples of where that's used in tunes and how we can use it in real music. Check out the whole series to go find the videos that outline the process for minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, all individually, so you can play chord melodies with those chords. And in the Make It A Chord Melody series playlist, there's other videos as well where we're arranging tunes and songs. So let's do it. Let's talk about chord melodies over two five ones. Let's put it all together. We learned the chord melody scales of three different chord types. We even use them in context of songs. But what if we're doing a two five one progression, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, and we want to start to piece together our playing that chord melody as the progression moves along. The first thing to do is something that I often refer to as the comping game in comping. And I teach this in my jazz comping mastery uh, course. And it's the same premise here, but we're gonna be using melody on top where we're playing out of time and we just play one chord shape per beat and on each chord you can jump to whatever you want whatever shape you want but when you change chords you try to move to the closest possible shape um, and it's just out of time right so we'll go four of d minor seven one two three four just like the stuff we drilled but now we have to switch to g7 so where's the closest g7 you take your time you figure it out there it is right there ah sounds lovely because we went to the closest possible one one two three four where's the c major seven that's going to make sense could be this could be this sometimes there's a few options could be this right so i could stay on that note move here move here move here but now i'm on c major seven for uh not four but eight because there's two measures of it one two three four one two three four back to d minor g7 and C major. Whoa, we can hear D minor, G7, C major. And I'm doing it in time, but the point is to do it out of time first, then do it in time which uh, I basically did both of those, and then try to do it with some phrasing where, you know, maybe even with a play along. So let's try it with this uh, backing track and, oh, that's very slow. <laughs> Didn't want it to be that slow. Okay. There's G7. And then here comes C major. showing how you know you could go into switching between the two, which a lot of players do, a little bit of fill of lead lines and then the chord melodies or little chord melody fill in between lead lines. But you heard that happening in time um, where just kind of improvising that phrasing, but then switching the shapes and you could see the highlighted on the screen there to show you where I was. So I hope that was helpful um, demonstration. Can't overemphasize how valuable the out of time comping game thing is four beats pause as long as you want to find the closest thing and then move to the closest one until you can do that in time at that point you're pretty much ready to it's going to just unfold in your playing just automatically well that was doing it in the context of music but not a specific tune we just did a random two five one well two five ones are everywhere Autumn Leaves was part of this series. We did a chord melody of Autumn Leaves. Check out the series playlist to find that. Link in the description. Uh, but let's just do the beginning of this 
I'll just loop it here. Uh, actually, we'll just let it loop like this and play chord melody. Obviously different key, but C minor, F7, different chord there, and then you can just play whatever else. Fun example also of playing the single notes and then leading into, and I very consciously was like, oh, I better get higher. I better move up. Uh, to get close, uh, to have the melody on the top of the string when that change comes around to C minor so I can move back into melodically without just jumping and skipping to it. I can back, you know, go back into that, uh, those shapes. Very practical once you get a little bit of that going. Yes, we're still at a very slow tempo, but of course that's the way to do it at first. But because two five ones are everywhere, um, you'll have that in your vocabulary, just be using it all the time if you're playing over various tunes. It's gonna come up as an opportunity. Manha de Carnival, uh, Black Orpheus is also a tune we did in this series that also has two, five, one, even has D minor, G7, C major seven. So it you know comes up in really all over the place. Fly Me to the Moon has D minor, it has that same two, five, one in it. Uh, my solo guitar arrangement pack has a chord melody arrangement of Fly Me to the Moon in it. And it has many other arrangements as well. If you want some chord melody arrangements to study closely, there's tabs and notation. Get my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's solo guitar arrangements, but also specifically some chord melody arrangements and some stuff in between. So you can check it out in detail where I use these exact voicings on several tunes like Fly Me to the Moon and Black Orpheus. And you can see, oh yeah, that that's the arrangement and the language unfolding. And you can see it on paper. If you want to get that, there's a link in the description to grab it totally for free, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to download it there. I post a new lesson video every week. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.